today on Real Life, bringing the book of Genesis to the big screen. Producer Eric Hovind shares details on his new film about the creation. Plus, on today's life, Kelly Crab Bowling's story of survival, how God's hand of protection has impacted her ministry. And on Real Life Coaching, Daniel Ryan Day teaches about specific callings. That's today on Real Life. This is real life. God loves you. Jesus died for you. The Holy Spirit, he empowers you. And the Bible is your and my guide to abundant life. I'm your host, Don Black, with Terry, my co-host, and sister, Pastor Amy Schaefer. Hey. So good to be back Hi. with you. Hey. What yes. a great day. It is an awesome day. What's well, raining outside? I know. That's, you guys have a positive attitude. We're I'm speaking telling you. words of life you over sunshine, this. little sunshine beams over here. But we need the rain. I, so yes. I'm really glad that it's raining. Sorry. I'm just, I'm just kind of looking out and saying it's raining and cold. But I'm, I'm thankful for the rain. Well, we need the rain. Yeah, we do. Okay, so I, I was a, a field trip mom, yeah. oh, and we go. went to a bog. Do you know a what a bog, bog is? Bog? No. It's. <laughs> It's like a water reserve. That's what you talk about oh. computer. It, yeah, a, a blog, yeah, a blog. And anyway, so this lady who was very passionate about trees and science and the forest said because of the lack of rain and because of the warm weather, our leaves were not going to turn and be a beautiful show like we're used to here. Well, you, oh, so, that makes so the sense. rain is good today. Yeah, because yeah. our tree, we have this beautiful, we used typically have a very beautiful tree in our front yard, but it didn't have any color at yep. all this year, and the tree leaves are down Would already. You, you know what the good news is? What's the good news? All the leaves just disappeared. Yeah, he, we don't have to I came rake home one night. We reason. came home from a trip, and really? the tr leaves were up there, and they were dead, and then I came home, came home that night, all the leaves were gone. They're in our neighbor's yard, I think. <laughs> oh, I don't, don't know, know where they, they went. <laughs> So, I'm just glad they're gone. I mean, we do live at the top of a hill, so is it possible that all that the, the leaves, wind, you know, we're sort popular of in our you neighborhood. You blessed your neighbors. <laughs> How blessed. sweet of you with We're all fertilizer. of your leaves. <laughs> <laughs> all the leaves are. Oh, see, I'm singing now. Uh -huh, oh good. my oh. word, things are starting to get. You real know what wacky. we're doing in our family, and I have to say, I am not a fan of this at all. Okay. This is uh, Kelsey and Dawn's doing. Uh oh. <laughs> Hold on to your hat. Oh, yeah, let's, Hold on to your let's hat. hear. A yard sale. Oh, yes. Uh, oh, yes. No, I do that's not. so much work. I, thank you. <laughs> thank so, you so much. And you don't see, I don't see the benefit well, we're from We're going to make five work. or six bucks, but listen. <laughs> the, the 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 theme Kelsey has made a theme. Okay. It's called em uh, we're em empty nesters and our and our some bossy daughter. our bossy daughters making us sell stuff. She said that's we our too theme. Much stuff. I love that. That's a that's a TV show. <laughs> empty nesters and bossy daughters. And bossy daughters. <laughs> well, we're glad you tuned in to Real Life. Let me tell you what what this program's all about. We take the Word of God and we ask Him to provide real answers for our real life, everyday real life. That's what this program is all about. Like we, we, we come from the Bible scripture. Jesus said, I've come that you'd have life and have it more abundantly. So you're going to live your life. That's just going to happen. Is it going to be God's kind of life for you? Or is it going to be your kind of life for you? Or is it going to be kind of settled for life? We don't want you to settle for anything. We want you to walk in victory and want you to walk in the abundance of God's blessings. Yeah. And Sister Amy, that is really the promise that Jesus has made to us. I know. That's what abundant life means. Yep, abundant life. Over the top, he wants to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could even ask or think. We need to really think big and dream big because our God is a great God who has great plans for his kids. Well, speaking Amen. of thinking big, have you ever considered creation? Yeah. Just go ahead, we're talking about the leaves changing. What about creation? How did God make this place? We've got a, a guest that's going to talk about creation, and he's a filmmaker, so you can get a little glimpse out of a film that is really revolutionary. So don't go away. We're going to show you that and talk about the, the wonders 
of creation. But first, Terry, what's coming up next? Well, I wanted to say I love the wonder of creation. I just enjoyed this weekend being outside and just walking on our, the new trails that we have. It's, they're just beautiful, and I just love being outside. Mm -hmm. Well, what we're going to find out next is when Kelly Crab Bowling's tour bus crashed, her life flashed before her eyes. She shares her story of unshakable faith on today's life. Let's take a look. What would you do when everything is going your way and then something happens and your life comes crashing down? The Bowling family are no strangers to the Christian music world. 23 number one songs, three Grammy nominations, 11 Dove Awards, and regular guests at the Grand Old Opry. Their greatest gift that they have shared with millions through their music and their words is their unshakable faith. And it was tested the day that their tour bus crashed headed to a concert, leaving them with severe life-threatening injuries. This is their story of unshakable faith. This is today's life. So when you think of the Bowling family, what songs do most people request? The first one would be Your Cries Have Awoken the Master, which is probably my favorite song that we have done. Mike is known for uh, carrying some of the traditional back in the 70s uh, sound. And so he, those two, those as well, some of the traditional Southern gospel from the 70s. But Your Cries Have Awoken the Master is absolutely the most requested song. Mm -hmm. And who inspired you the most? Musically, who inspired me the most was some of the greats like Vestal Goodman and I always loved Sherry Easter and a group called the Magruders who I can remember our parents driving us six hours one way to hear sing, all of us kids, when we were first starting to sing. And the anointing was just so strong. And when they would sing, you felt like they were ministering to just you. And I'm so thankful that they exposed us to those kinds of ministries that it was really about the people mm -hmm. and not just about a stage, but it was about so much more and altar calls and, and things like that. But those are some, some and the Isaacs. Of the Isaacs. Isaacs. Now you are on the road all the time. How much are you traveling? We travel probably 200 dates a year. So all the time, about every weekend we're out on tour somewhere, three or four days a week. So, and all of the girls with us. And that's all that I've known for 20 years. So, And within that 20 years, there was a time that turned tragic for you. Yes. In 2010, July of 2010, we were in a bus wreck in Belmont, North Carolina. And that day changed everything for us. It, our whole world got turned upside down on that day. And we will never be the same because of that day. It just happened so fast that the first thing I remember is rolling out of my bunk when we came to the stop. And my first thought was, my baby was only three at the time, and often she would lay down for a nap with me, and I remember thinking, she's not in here with me. You know, I was kind of, just woke up, so everything was a little, you know, when you disoriented. So when the brake slammed and it stopped, I walked up front, and I opened the door to the front lounge where everybody was, and where the roof was, it was just demolished, and the sun was shining through the front of the bus. I mean, it was just the, no words to describe how messed up the bus was. And it honestly felt like a dream. It didn't feel like reality. And I remember thinking this can't be happening. And the first person that I, of course, everybody was screaming. The kids were screaming. And I saw my sister and we sort of made an eye contact. 
And I looked down, and my husband was in the floor, and he was unrecognizable and barely conscious. He was slumped down. Mm-hmm. And Tara and I exchanged a look that, because we were sisters and we know each other so well, I knew she was trying to tell me, I don't think he's okay. And so she was trying to say to him, and somewhere during the chaos, it, it gets a little bit, you know, you try to place the time of it all. But my six-year-old, Caitlin, we realized that she was bleeding very badly. And she had lacerated her face wide open. And she was losing a tremendous amount of blood. And we just were trying to see to her. And we were trying to get Mike to just speak or moan. And he finally moaned. And... Finally, we got everybody off the bus with the help of, you know, our employees and stuff. And a helicopter came, and they took Mike. And honestly, that's when it all started to sink in that this had really happened. And it was starting to get real that life had really changed, and it was going to be different. Kelly, tell me about the ER experience and the healing, and how long were you in the hospital? I was in the hospital for almost a week. Mike was miraculously, we found out he had a bleed on his brain and a fractured skull. Mm -hmm. So he scared us so badly, but amazingly didn't have to have surgery for the brain bleed, which was just the power of prayer in my opinion. So he got to leave and Caitlin had plastic surgery on her face and she had crushed her clavicle. But they got to leave before I did because my back, so that they were at a hotel, obviously, there in in Charlotte. But my back was, the vertebrae had burst when it threw me in my bunk. And my feet hit the wall of my bunk. It it caused a really bad break in my back. And so I ended up being the one that was... How long did it take for you to recover? To fully recover and get rid of my back brace and the walker probably five or six months. Honestly, I did want to go back to sing because I knew it would require a bus. And I always laugh and say I begged God for an airplane, but but eventually we would have to go back. Or Just because the calling's hard doesn't mean you're not called anymore. And God knew our hearts were broken, but we had to decide, are we, are we called or not? And are we going to trust God to to walk back to what we know we're called to do. So it took six months, and then you were back on the road? It took about six months of recovery before we could even think about it, you know. Mm -hmm. And Mike, with a head injury, he couldn't even sing a song without a headache at first. He would sit down at the piano and try to sing, and he would get a headache. And so going back was a process. We had to work just a little bit when we went back, and I couldn't even stand up straight. You know, I couldn't stand up for very long at a time. And then, of course, the emotional part of it, everybody had suffered all that. And my kids was the hardest part. My kids, that was the hardest part as a mom because I felt such a guilt that that happened to them in the first place because we were out traveling and having to to weigh that out in my mind and think, is this fair? Is this right? But kids are so strong, and and God just provided the grace that we needed to to go back out. And because we went back out, I believe that we'll never be the same. The calling seems greater, and the ministry seems, it's almost like God put a new fire in us because we got to survive, and now we can tell other people that they can survive too. Kelly, thank you so much and for sharing your story and your unshakable faith. That's going to impact so many lives. Thank you. My friend, has your life crashed around you and you need healing in your life? Let the Lord put all those pieces back together so that you too can share your story of unshakable faith that will give him honor and glory. This is today's life. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.
man, well, I can't imagine what it would be like to be on a bus and, and, and be in a crash like that with I your family know. on the oh, bus. I know. And the, the thoughts and the imaginations that are going through your mind because you don't know what's happening internally in right. all of the bodies and your family and the people you love. Absolutely. Well, and a bus, it, since it's a tour bus, they're not wearing seat belts. They're not, you know, it's, and I mean, she was sleeping in her bunk when it all happened, you know? You know, when stuff like that happens in our life, I, what a testimony that is because fear can paralyze you in life Absolutely. and keep you from moving forward in that great calling, that great purpose. And I like what she said, the, the calling is greater mm -hmm. than any fear. So, I mean, imagine the fear to get back on the bus, yes. to do what you're called to do, to ride on the road 200 days out of the year. Yes, that's so many. And, and, and like she said, too, it, it, it was one thing with it was just herself and her husband and her sister. But when you have your children mm -hmm. with you, there, there uh, could be a magnified fear yeah. bringing them. But I think as a family, they travel together and... So we've really seen victory in their lives. And you know what? That, that is not for just them. It's for you too. You can have victory in your life too. And we would invite you, if you want someone to pray with you, to please contact our phone lines. They're open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Please call 1-888-665-4483. And someone will be there to pray with you. Mm -hmm. Everybody, Maybe, yeah. Everybody has crashes. Yeah, that's right. You've had a crash. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about. You've had that experience. You may not have been a bus crash, but you had a crash in your life. Yeah. Maybe multiple crashes or something that you, you, you had something happen to you that was devastating. Well, it's not that it happened. It's what happens next that matters. And so if you're in that situation and you feel frozen by mm -hmm. fear and you feel like you can't move forward, you're afraid to go outside. There's somebody watching right now. I'm afraid to go outside. Just afraid to go outside. That's not what God wants you to do. That's not abundant life. Right. So pl please let us pray together. Let's pray together. It's not an easy thing. I'm not minimizing it. It's natural and sometimes understandable, but God wants to break you through. Yes. Break through. He has a plan that includes you being free. Mm -hmm. So step out. Step out and call us as a very first baby step towards that freedom. Call the number that's on the screen. Now, maybe you're watching real life for the first time. Maybe somebody's tuned in and said, what are those folks doing? Well, we're talking about Jesus and we're talking about living an abundant life in the power of his Holy Spirit. We're talking about being able to be more than conquerors in Christ. We're, ta we're talking about impacting our culture with the Word of God, taking the good news to the whole world to see the great, the great Commission fulfilled, and then watching Jesus come back to this earth. That's what we all are about. I want you to be part of that. If you don't, you, you don't know what's going on in our, our ministry, your first way in, first step, the way into the, into the living room is our newsletter. We want to send it to you. Here's how you can get it. I was diagnosed with boring mail. I just hated getting my mail because all I got were bills. I felt so bored and disconnected. One day, I called for the Cornerstone Real Life Newsletter. Now, I can't wait to go to my mailbox. Side effects of the Real Life Newsletter may include a closer walk with God, daily encouragement, information about Cornerstone Network special guests, and more. Call today for the Real Life Newsletter. It'll change your life. Terry, um, Russ Bixler, who was him and Norma founded this network mm -hmm. 38 years ago, he said if you don't understand Genesis 1, you don't understand. You can't understand anything if you can't understand Genesis 1. You mean the... The Genesis. book of Genesis, oh, okay. the okay. first chapter in the book of Genesis. That's kind of the, the key to understanding God. And there's the, everybody can probably take this, this sentence. In the beginning, God mm -hmm. created the heavens and the earth. Mm -hmm. Well, a new movie, the Gen Genesis Paradise Lost, brings that creation story to life. Let's take a peek.
On November 13th, experience the biblical creation. Learn the truth about evolution and discover God's ultimate plan of redemption. Modern science was born in the womb of the Christian worldview. Genesis passes the scientific method. Is Big Bang observable and repeatable? No. Has anybody ever made life from non-life? No. Here's why we believe this, and it's not just faith. We have science. It's really on our side. Please join us for this exclusive event where science and the Bible are brought together like you've never experienced before. Genesis, Paradise Lost. Tickets are available at genesismovie.com. I love that voice. <laughs> Harry Coven is the producer of this tremendous film. He's mm -hmm. also present and the founder of Creation Today. Eric, so glad you're here with us. Well, thank you guys very much Welcome for having me. Welcome to Real Life. We're glad you're here. We really appreciate the opportunity to be here. Well, tell us about yourself. Where are you from? Tell us about your family. Uh, my name is Eric Coven. I'm the president of Creation Today. I've got three beautiful children and an amazing wife, uh, Tanya. We've been married for 18 years now, and we are mere specks of dust that love to glorify our Creator God. <laughs> That's what we love to do. Specks of dust. That's an interesting uh, description. Where do you live? Pensacola, Florida, the Gulf Coast area, yeah. Hurricane Central this year. <laughs> now, the name of your organization is called Creation Today. How, is that, how did you begin your journey? I've been traveling and speaking now for 18 years on apologetics, teaching people how to defend the truth of what that book right there says, that God really did create the heavens and the earth. I've been to all 50 states, been to many foreign countries, teaching and training Christians how to defend that truth. That's good. And what we find out is that all the objections, all the things that are coming against the Word of God are answered at creation. Mm -hmm. Creation really is relevant today. When you read the Bible, why does it say the animals bring forth after their kind and the beasts bring forth after their kind and the sure. plants bring forth after their Kind, you go, why is God repeating this over and over and over? And then you realize what's going on today. Mm -hmm. They're saying the animals and plants are going to produce a different kind. That's right. And evolution has crept in. And they've, our, our young people today, many of you have children or grandchildren right. that are being taught. Evolution is how we got here. And that's not the truth. Creation is relevant today. Oh, that is so true that about children because they are being taught that evolution is the way. They are. You know, and that creation science is a myth. Yep. When you say in our own family, we've had that <laughs> well, it's, dialogue. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's one of the tactics of progressivism yep. is mm -hmm. to take away every reference to God. Mm -hmm. And so that that's one of the ones, but even though scientifically, and you're much better at this than me, science itself now disproves evolution. It Absolutely, just, science is not in the favor of evolution. There has been zero scientific evidence that really can support the idea of molecules to man. What they have to do is they have to take the information, the facts that we have, and they have to say, well, if we look at it this way, and that's the problem is how do we look at the scientific facts? Do we look at them in light of a divine creator that designed everything? I love uh, one of our speakers in the movie, Genesis Paradise Lost, is Dr. Charles Jackson. And he said, if you want to believe in evolution, you have to believe in miracles that's right. without a miracle maker. That's right. that's you have to right. believe that everything came from nowhere. You have to yeah. believe that life came from non-life. You have to yeah. believe in miracles without the God of miracles. It yeah. just doesn't work. It doesn't well, make any sense, does no. it, Eric? Oh, I'm sorry. So after all this, you... How did your, this movie come about? Uh, I met uh, the, the director of the film, Ralph Streen, who had worked at EA Sports, Lockheed Martin, and then Disney. Incredibly talented guy, and we did a series called Creation Minute. And after that, we decided, let's, let's put the Bible to life. It was actually Ralph's idea. I said, this is perfect because Nova and Discovery Channel and what airs on PBS, they have an evolutionary scientist talk about how something crawled up out of the oceans and onto land, and then they have some computer-generated graphic showing it happen, and kids are sitting there going, huh, well, I guess it really happened. Yeah. And I'm going, no, 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 God's Word is what is true. God created and designed us, and we are incredibly designed. So we thought, let's take that same idea of showing people what it looks like and let's do that on the big screen. Let's actually bring Genesis to life. So this, this is the first 3D biblical film ever produced. Mm. 
and it will literally bring to life the verses of Genesis. Wow. So instead of just reading in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, you get to experience oh. God creating the heavens and the earth. Wow. So you're literally watching it happen right there on the big screen. And we're going to be on uh, 1,200 screens across America on two days, November 13th and November 16th. Do you think you'll be in Pittsburgh? We are. I just looked it up. Oh, and good. Uh, yeah, I was actually talking to your staff. We're going to get everybody tickets and make sure they go. Yay. So, you know. oh, so, so how long did it yeah, take you to awesome. produce that film? We've been in production for seven years. Wow. wow. You got to think, it's computer generated. When you do computer generated, the computers, you have to create the world. You have to animate everything, make it move. You have to color it, light it, shade it. And then you have to say, okay, for 3D, you have a camera right here and a camera right here that moves through and it renders out the scene. Well, you guys know for television production, you've been in for a long time, every second of television is really about 30 pictures. Mm -hmm. Well, it takes the computers 8 to 12 hours to render out one picture. My goodness. Wow. So you literally have to sit there and render and render and render and render and get all these scenes. But you saw some of the computer generated graphics. People are asking us, is that film? And we say, no, no stock photography, no stock footage. This is all brand new original creation here. So if, if, if God answers all your prayers for this film, what would happen? The culture would change. Mm. The ripple effect of this hitting our culture at a time such as this would ripple all the way into eternity. Mm -hmm. And people would see, wow, not only am I created by God, but that understanding has some serious implications. That means that I'm not naturally good, I'm a sinner. Mm -hmm. That means that this creation really has fallen. It's called Genesis Paradise Lost because mm -hmm. God did make an original creation that was perfect, that was pure, that was good. Mm -hmm. And we don't have that anymore today. Mm -hmm. And so the film takes us from creation all the way to the point of the need for salvation mm -hmm. and why Jesus Christ is so important. So what do I hope that God will do with this? I hope that many, many people at the end of this movie will realize I am not the byproduct of random chance, accidental, accidental mutations. I am made in the image of God and therefore I have meaning and I have purpose and I have a calling and I need to be saved. You know, Eric, we're gonna stand Thank with you in prayer Absolutely. and we're gonna ask our prayer partners to do that. Thank you. And we're gonna put on a website where you can go and find out where the, th where the film is gonna be played in your area. Because uh, you, you need to go see it Absolutely. And, and, and engage in it. This isn't an entertainment. I suspect there is entertainment involved, but it's, it's factual. It's yes. telling the truth of the creation. Thanks, Eric. Thank you, Eric, for coming. You know, facts are facts. Mm -hmm. You know, let's, they're either facts or they're not. We love our news. Let's see what Sydney's found in the news. federal judge in Wisconsin struck down a tax law granting free housing for clergy. Under the law, ministers of the gospel do not pay income taxes on compensation designated for their housing allowance. The Freedom From Religion filed the lawsuit claiming the law discriminates against secular employees. Ministry leaders say if the tax break goes away, it would put many churches in jeopardy and they wouldn't be able to afford to do what they do. According to the Joint Committee on Taxation, the benefit saves faith leaders $800 million a year in taxes. Israel's prime minister wants the Christian media to put a spotlight on persecution. Benjamin Netanyahu spoke to a group of journalists at the first Christian media summit in Jerusalem. He encouraged Christian journalists to spotlight the suffering of believers, especially in Iran. Netanyahu says they should sit with families and countless of others who live in constant fear while they're trying to walk out their faith. The summit brought together more than 100 Christian journalists from around the world to learn about Israel's biblical history and security challenges. Well, that's all for God in the Headlines. Have a great day on Purpose. Hey, Cornerstone family, great news. Now you can access all your favorite Cornerstone moments right from your iPhone or iPad. Once you download the brand new Cornerstone television app, you can watch our live programming on demand, including special original shows and movies. You can also use the app to call for prayer. At CTVN, you are our family. And now, thanks to the Cornerstone television app, we're just a click away. Cornerstone Cares is God's love in action. We focus on meeting tangible needs like food, education, health care, and housing for people all over the world, as well as sharing the good news of Jesus. From disaster relief efforts here in the United States to community support in Zimbabwe and Mongolia, 
from Street Ministry here in Pittsburgh to the education of Peruvian and South African children, your support of Cornerstone Cares goes a long way. What is our calling in life? How do we find out what God wants us to do with our lives? Are we just accidents? Are we just biological occurrences? No, God has a plan. How do we accomplish that? How do we walk in that calling? Daniel Ryan Day is the author of Intentional Christian. He's our coach all this week. He's going to show us how to discover what to do. Now get this, when we don't know what to do. So get a pen, paper, and let's learn how we can win God's way through real life coaching. Are we talking about the calling of God and this common calling, the specific calling? But when I look at the scripture, and I think a lot of people look at the scripture, they see a lot of examples of specific calls. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the Bible's full of stories of people that were specifically called by God to do something specific. Uh, and, but what I've found is that as I've looked through some of these stories, um, in fact, this is one of the biggest critiques, I think, that people come up with when they're talking about this book is, hey, it's great that you're talking about common callings, living out your faith. Everybody should do that. But isn't there an equal emphasis in the Bible on being specifically called by God to do something? And so let's look through some of those stories and see maybe what we can learn from people that have gone before us who have been specifically called by God. One of my favorite stories, and we've actually mentioned this in an earlier segment, is the story of Noah. Noah was specifically called by God to build a boat. And Noah did that, but that was a very small part of Noah's story. Noah spent 500 years walking humbly with God, which is what Genesis 6, 9 tells us. It says that he was a righteous man who walked with God. So the big story of Noah's life isn't the ark. The big story of Noah's life is that he walked with God. You know, another thing that people say is that a specific calling will have to do with a job. But there's actually, most of the people that we see in the Bible, it didn't have to do with a job. Like Abraham, for example. What was Abraham's specific calling? He was called by God to move to a certain place and to make babies actually, <laughs> to start this line of people that would become the nation of Israel. It didn't matter what Abraham did, the fact that he had flocks. Um, it didn't matter what he did for a living. Abraham's specific call was to simply live with God in this place and to begin this line of people. So in the Bible, specific calling isn't always about a job. Another example is a lot of times people talk about specific calling and they'll say, well, this is probably something that is going to be really exciting for me, that I'm going to be really passionate about, that it's going to be purposeful and fulfilling. But when we look at some of the stories in the Bible, these guys didn't want anything to do with what God was calling them to do, like Moses, for an example. And I really like the story of Moses. In fact, I'd encourage you to go back and read that story because what you're going to see is a bunch of excuses that you and I can relate to really well. Moses says, you know, God, I, I'm not even good at speaking, and yet you're calling me to go speak, which that's something we should think about too because people always say, well, God's going to call you to what you're good at. God's going to call you to what you're not with Moses. God called Moses to do something that he wasn't good at, but that God would be his strength. And so that's a big lesson for us too. God's not going to always put you where your strengths are. Another thing people say is God will never give you more than you can handle. With Moses, God gave Moses more than he could handle. In fact, God was with Moses, and that's the only reason Moses was able to deal with the calling that God had given him. And so with Moses, it's not necessarily going to be something that they want. Um, maybe even a better example of that would be the story of Jonah. I mean, Jonah, 
He wanted so little to do with God's calling, he goes and buys a ticket, mm -hmm. gets on a boat, and sails to the furthest place away from the, the, where God was calling him to go because he wanted so little to do with God's calling. And so there's a lot we can learn that might surprise us when we look at some of the specific callings in the Bible. It doesn't always have to do with the job. It's not always going to be in our sweet spot or what we think we're good at. It's not going to always be something that we can enjoy. And the story with Jonah, he couldn't get out of it. Yeah. Well, I wonder if that's not the case with us too. Yeah. You know, when the Lord has a specific call you know, in our lives that we can run, but we can't hide. Yeah. You know, that's what, that's what Jonah tried to do. Yeah, that's right. But the Lord intercepted him. Yeah. And then he sent him and the mission was accomplished. And then he, he, he got all in misery in a, in a pity party because God did what he said he was going to do. Yeah. You know, so he's an interesting story of a man who uh, didn't want to do it, but he was a, he was a prophet. See, sometimes we forget that Jonah was a prophet. Mm -hmm. So he had been engaged with God as a, a voice, a messenger yeah. of God. And when, when God asked him to expand his, his voice to a people that he didn't really appreciate, <laughs> he said, nah, let me, let, me, uh, let me get away from here. You know, how's that apply to us in our specific calling in our lives? Sometimes that's what the Lord will ask us to do yeah. and we're not comfortable. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we gotta remember who is calling us. God is calling us. God has a plan that is far beyond anything that I can ask, that I can imagine. You know, we're actually taught by Jesus to pray, God, may your kingdom come and your will be done because oftentimes God's kingdom and God's will is outside of things that make us feel comfortable. You know, like one of the common callings is to love our enemies. I don't know anybody that is good at that. I don't know anybody that finds it easy to live out that calling. And that's exactly what God was calling Jonah to do, was to love his enemies. And not, this is how badly Jonah didn't want to do that. He goes and sits up on a hill after he preaches to Nineveh, and he sits back and goes, okay, God, destroy them. I'm going to watch as you mm -hmm. destroy the people. Mm -hmm. And God, in his grace, has a plant grow up so that Jonah's not out miserable in the heat. But God doesn't destroy those people. Instead, God loves those people, shows grace and compassion on the city of Nineveh, and Jonah pouts about it. He doesn't want them to be shown grace because they're the enemies of Israel. And so, yeah, God might call us in a similar way, something way outside of our comfort zone. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, loving our enemies is going to be really uncomfortable sometimes. <laughs> all, sometimes, yeah. all the time. It's always going to stretch us to be able to be kind, much yeah. less loving to, to people that we feel are our enemies. Well, when you think about that, and you think about this, the uh, specific call of God, sometimes uh, we just need God to make it clear. Yeah. And every one of the people that in the Bible, they, God made it clear. Absolutely. So if it's not clear, if that isn't clear in your heart or in, the, in, our, in, our, in our friend's heart, then, then should we, well, what should we do? Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, if you think of everybody, like just, just take a moment in your head and think, okay, people called by God in the Bible, how did God call them? Let's skip ahead to the New Testament. We got the disciples, Jesus shows up in person and calls them. It's very clear, I want you to leave everything and to follow me. Paul, vision from the sky, <laughs> it gets so bright and then there's a voice out of heaven that says, Paul, this is what I want you to do. God makes it very, very clear. When I hear a lot of stories now about people that say, well, I feel called mm -hmm. to ministry or I feel called to do this. And then you look at the circumstances of, your li of their life and you go, are you sure? Because you're really, you're not a people person. And what you're describing is something that's going to require you to be a really good people person. Or... They feel called to a ministry and there's absolutely no support for what the, they're wanting to do. Now, there might be situations where God wants them to step out in faith. I'm not going to say that in every situation that they're just wrong because th that support's not there. But a lot of times God also calls us to be wise as he is wise. And so when we look at the Bible, we see all these specific callings. One of the things I think we can take away from that is that God was very clear with each of these people this is what I want you to do. They tried to get out of it. No, 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 no. This is what I want you to do. Well, God, can I do this instead? No, 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 no. This is what I want you to do. He was very clear. 
And so if you're in that similar situation where you maybe are starting to feel those promptings, mm-hmm. that could absolutely be the Holy Spirit leading you to something. Mm-hmm. So ask God, God, if this is what you want me to do, show up in a very clear way so that I know that it's your voice that's speaking to me. A great example of that would be um, a mentor of mine. He was actually my fifth grade teacher, and uh, I'm still friends with him. And he told me a story one time about feeling called to join a ministry. And he wished that he had somebody sit down with him and say, well, if you're called, then your wife should also feel like this is something you should do because she wanted nothing to do with this. Well, he decides anyway, well, I feel called, so we're, I'm just going to move the family. He had just finished building a house for his wife, so picture that. I'm going to move the family anyway, and we're going to go move to Michigan, join this ministry because I want to be a Christian writer. They do that, miserable experience. It all falls apart. And so uh, a few years ago, I felt called to a ministry, and I was sitting there talking with him, and he looks at me in the eyes, and he says, Daniel, if your wife does not feel like this is something you should do, then you need to pray, God, if you want us to do this, you need to make it clear to her too, because you have already put us together. You have made us one flesh. And so, God, if you're calling me, then it needs to be a calling for us. And can you make it clear to her too before you step out in that way? That's so important. It's so important. And that also backs up to the point when a person hasn't gotten married yet, how critical it is, yeah. to, and you love the Lord, to find somebody who loves the Lord too and is we willing to join with you because yeah. that, could, that could be a block in your future use, God's use of you if your spouse isn't willing and just yeah. and then have that unity of, of, of being together. I, you know, you make, you make me think about when, when that calling is experienced, sometimes, tell me if this is true in your experience, it's for a season yet to come. Mm-hmm. You get a little taste of something. The Spirit prompts you yeah. about what's going to be. And, you know, a lot of us go, well, that's now then. I'm, yeah. I'm going to do it now. Yeah. You know, rather than waiting for God in His perfect timing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, not only in my own life, but I've talked to a lot of people um, that are, you know, in the similar boat. They really feel like God's doing something in their life, or, or maybe they're not even a Christian, but they feel like they're supposed to do something else, and they're trying to figure out the process for figuring that out. And, uh, you know, what I have found, I actually, I didn't come up with this. There was, a, I was working at a Christian bookstore in college, my wife and I were, and we started to sense that there might be something more coming. And so I, I sat down with the owners. We were good friends with the owners of the bookstore, and they were older, which that's really important, by the way. Find somebody that's older than you who has life experience that can speak into your life. Anyway. So I'm sitting down with the owners of this bookstore and I begin to just describe what I'm going through and she goes, yep, that's how it starts. You start to feel untethered. You start to feel like, okay, maybe something's coming. God's starting to do something. God's on the move. Mm -hmm. And it's not time for you to say, okay, I quit my job and I'm gonna go sit at home until I figure it out. Instead, this is just the beginning workings of God speaking to your heart and beginning to lead you toward what he has for you to do. That's how it's been true for me. The Lord always salts before yeah. He serves. And so He salted in my heart a desire. And then sometimes it took years Absolutely, for yeah. that to come. Sometimes it would be years before that prophetic desire that the Lord put in me becomes manifest, becomes alive. And it's that process of waiting. Hardest part of oh, being yeah. a Christian and being a, walking in God's way is waiting. That's yeah, the hardest yet, part. That's what we're called to do. Psalm 27. Wait on the Lord. That's the whole theme of that psalm is to wait on God. You and I are called to wait on God. But we're, we're not good in that, especially in an American or Western culture where it's always about pick up your bootstraps and get going. Instead, you and I are called to wait on God, which might be one of the hardest of all the calls. Well, I can only say for myself it is. <laughs> Daniel's wrote a great book. It's called Intentional Christian. And he's, he's made a way for us to have it for our family. So we're able to offer this book to you as, a, as our as our support for you as our partner. So uh, if you'll call the number that's on the screen, we want to get the book into your hand and a special DVD that he's made that teaches, only available here, teaches this, uh, this, this at a personal level, share stories and, and life application that you can't get anywhere else. And uh, I'm so happy that you were willing to do this yeah. and be here with us to, 
to offer to our family your your book in this DVD. It's that's great. Well, it's my pleasure. You know, uh, any opportunity like this is God given, first of all, and uh, because God has blessed you all with the opportunity to even uh, have a studio like this for us to be able to film these. Um, but what a blessing as well for well, me when to be you. Part when of you it. wrote the, the book, and I don't know how long it took you to do it, it took a while, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. But when you did that, when you said, God, use this book to do what? How, how do you end that sentence? Yeah. My desire for this book is that for everyone who is struggling to figure out what they're supposed to do, God has hope and freedom for you to experience. And, you know, the subtitle of this book is What to Do When You Don't Know What to Do. We all, all end up in that situation. And if you're struggling to figure that out, if you're struggling to hear God's voice, mm -hmm. if you're struggling to figure out what you should do, mm -hmm. let God take that burden off your shoulders and experience the hope and the freedom that is available to you through the power of the Holy Spirit um, and through our Savior that died for us. You know, that's such an important thing, Daniel, because you're motivated to serve the Lord because you have a love for Him. That's why you want to be used to it. That's why you want to hear the call of God, because you love Him and you want to be pleasing to Him. That's why I'm so glad Daniel's with us all this week and tomorrow's program on Wednesday. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about getting into that life of being righteous before the Lord, how to, how to stand before the Lord in righteousness in spite of the circumstances, in spite of how we feel. So we're so thankful. Thank you, Daniel, for being with us. And, and don't miss tomorrow's program. It's very, very good. Be packed full of information. You're going to want to, you don't want to miss it. But first, here's a story of how God is moved through a life in His supernatural way. I've been a widow for over 46 years. And I've been going through problems by myself ever since then. Lately, I've been experiencing health issues and people just tell me to get over it and pull myself up by the bootstraps. But you know what? Sometimes I just can't do it alone. Some days it's just too hard. Cornerstone was there for me on those tough days. They never hung up on me or told me to get over it. God ministers to me every time I call. Through the Signs and Wonders program, I learned about prayer language and look forward to every Friday so I can worship in the Spirit and take communion with my Cornerstone family. Every night, I fall asleep to the healing scriptures from the Faith Rx CD. I have to be private about my prayer language because my church doesn't believe it is true or accept me when I pray in tongues. Cornerstone and the pastors on it mean even more to me. I am accepted and loved, and I never feel alone anymore. Never felt alone. Right. Because you know, Amy, we never are alone. No. Mm -hmm. and, and, and honestly, we are like family. Mm -hmm. I had a lady, we were out in Clarion, PA. And just like this lady, she said, Cornerstone was my church. Oh, really? Until I finally found a home. That's good. Oh, and I wow. thought, oh my gosh. She said, I listened to you guys every day talk about the Lord and talk about the gifts of the Spirit and talk about how to walk in, in, in victory and, mm -hmm. and walk in life. And I just thought, that's, that was awesome. That was. That's a woohoo moment. Yeah. You know, I'm, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, this, this, uh, is the reason why we're here. We're here to mm -hmm. help you to discover those next steps. You know, God has a next step for you. No matter how old you are, no matter how young you are, God is never standing still. He's always moving forward. His plan is progressive. That's why I'm so excited to be able to bring to you Daniel Ryan Day's teaching, The Intentional Christian. Because it's, it's his teaching breaks it down in a practical way that 
we all are called by God. But see, many times we get, we get tricked. And, and, and your gift to the ministry is of uh, $25 is what we want to ask you to support this ministry. And when we get this in you hand, your hand and the DVD. But Amy, it makes me think that sometimes we, uh, we wait for the big call. <laughs> you know, we want to be, yeah. we want to be in full-time ministry, mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. we felt the Lord moving in our hearts. Mm -hmm. We want to serve the Lord with our vocationally, but that's not the first step. Mm -mm. Many times it's that, uh, what, what he calls the common call, yeah. which is to walk out your, your salvation in your daily life. Right, right. And then that leads to where God wants you to go. Mm -hmm. But we forget about that and we're all focusing on the full time and it never ever happens, that dream job. Right, well we're called to live in peace. Mm -hmm. We're called to walk in love. We're called to walk in the word. We're called mm -hmm. to walk in the light. We're called to be the salt. And So I just think let's be obedient and do the little things well and right. let's like, Let's let our gifts and our callings make room for us mm. as we're operating according to the word of God. Guess what? The right doors will open, the wrong doors will close. Am I involved and engaged in a local church? How am I supporting ministry right now? Mm. Because usually when you're involved and engaged and serving in a, in a body, stuff starts to develop and that gift and that calling starts to develop. And then you have people, like he said, find somebody older than you. Right. They, man, you can iron sharpens iron. You can tell them how you're feeling about this. <laughs> and so anyway. That's true. And you know what? I really appreciated him sharing, um, like about Noah and about Abraham, that we just think about the fact that there is, um, that there is like the ark and then Abraham is the, is the father of the right. nation. Right. But we forget about the fact of how they lived their life to that right. point. Right. You know, they lived a righteous life. Yes. They lived like Amy was sharing. Uh, they lived in peace. They yep. obeyed God. Mm -hmm. They loved their family. They did the, what the common calling was all about. That's yes. how they lived. The common calling. Now that's a good thing. That's a, that's a good thing. And I, I want you to understand, please listen to me very clo closely. God has a purpose for your life. Right. Mm. That's the first thing the devil wants to steal. Well, the first thing he wants to steal is your salvation. He doesn't want you to know Jesus. But you've gone past that place. You've come to know the Lord. You, be, you now are a believer. You've become born again. You've asked God, to Jesus, to come into your heart and for God to save you. So you've made that first step. But there's another step and there's another step. God has that purpose for you. And that purpose has to be discovered intentionally. Mm -hmm. And that's why this teaching is so important. Daniel's teaching on how to be an intentional Christian, how to plot your way. You know, if, if you wanted to be a doctor and you said, well, I've got to go to school, I've got to study this, then I've got to go to college, and I've got to study this, and I'm going to go to medical school, and then I've got to intern. There are practical steps that you have to take. You want to be used by God, there are practical steps that you have to take mm -hmm. to get into the position to be available and to be ready to be used by God. So mm -hmm. I'm speaking to somebody very specifically. Mm -hmm. Listen to me because you, you're stuck. You're in that, in that place that you're waiting. You say, I'm just waiting on God. Well, as, as we've often said, God's waiting on you. God's ready. He's ready. He's waiting on you. So call the number that's on the screen, order the book and this DVD. Let me tell you about the DVD. This is an hour a little bit more than an hour of teaching from Daniel that is not in the book and it's not available anywhere else. You can only get it here on the Cornerstone Network and you can only get it for our family. I was, I'm pleased to be able to do that because you could probably go on Amazon and get the book, but we put them together and for your gift of $25 or more, we're going to send them to you. We'll pay for the shipping, get them right out to you as quickly as possible so you can start digging in. What is the, what is the common call in my life? And then as you listen to the Lord, you know, Amy, what, as, as you listen to God, mm -hmm. he starts revealing yes, to you. Right. Yeah. Now, when you first started towards ministry, mm -hmm. did you know exactly what you were going to do? Oh, no. Actually, I was just telling somebody the other day, we're actually seeing now today what we, God had in our hearts years ago. I mean, wow. we, we've been pastoring for 20 years. I mean, that's a long time to stay committed to the call of God. And we're just now seeing some of the, the fruit mm -hmm. and, and the dreams that we've had in our heart. It, 
seed, time, and harvest. Wow, I mean, I was on my way to, to, to me, I was in musical theater school, and I was on my way to Broadway to get everybody saved. <laughs> and so my idea, I had no, I didn't even consider going into ministry, but as I was walking it out, as I was serving in my local church at a big drama, and I was standing out there, and I was Mary Magdalene, and God Called, God spoke to me and he said, I want you to go to this Bible school. I didn't know what Bible school it was. I started to search it up and then this door opened. I go there. I do. It's like you, you work out your salvation. Right. It's not like he showed me my whole future. Right. I had no idea. I probably would have said, are you crazy? You've got the wrong girl. Right. But it's, it's just, it's fun just to obey God in the little steps. But right. I believe it's connected to the word. I believe it's connected to being committed and planted in a local church. Those planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. And I mean, God wants, God wants to use his kids um, to, to help his other kids. Right. How can you serve God's kids well? That's and that's good. where you're going to find a great purpose and that's calling. Great. That's great. Well, mm -hmm. I believe in you that God has in you greatness. If you've got the Holy Spirit living in you, brother and sister, you have greatness inside of you. The power of God, let that sink in. Sink in. You have the power of God inside of you right now. Right. He's not some far away place. He mm -hmm. is in heaven, but God lives inside of you. He lives inside of me. He lives inside of you guys in the presence of his Holy Spirit. That greatness, that seed of greatness. Now you can let the seed grow you can water and let it grow and become, become what dominates you, or you can suppress it mm -hmm. and suppress it down and, and, and not grow in your, in your faith, not grow in your spirit and just be a believer the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. But my goal for you isn't that you would be a believer only. I want you to be a follower of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I want you to get on the path that he's laid out for you so mm -hmm. you can walk in that path step by step. Will it be easy? No. It's not going to be easy. That's why we offer these, these tools for you to help you to take that next step. One more step, one more step. And it never ends. It never ends. So mm -hmm. again, call, call the number on the screen, get the book, the DVD, give your gift into the good ground of a cornerstone. Yep. Well, you know, as you're talking, I just really feel compelled to share with somebody out there that what we're talking about is not based on age. Okay, no. that wherever That's you are right. in whatever season of life, God has a plan for you. And yes. so for some of you that are my older friends, guess what? We know that God has something in plan for you. Yes. You are Hallelujah. not forgotten. You are being used. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. And the best is yet to come. Yes. The best is yet to come. Tomorrow, we're going to be with, with Daniel again. And I'm going to ask Terry to prepare. Tell us how God has led you. Ooh. Step. As Amy's told us, let's okay. tell about how God's led you. <laughs> we'll see you on tomorrow's Real Life. We always close with prayer. Call us for prayer. We love you. We close the prayer. We close the program in agreement. Yes. Father, Father, we thank you, Lord, so for the every one of these people who've called in, Lord. We thank you for the touch of your spirit in their lives. Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.